Hey guys, it's Dr. Mike. Today, I got my green tea here, mm. but I'm not talking to you about tea today. I'm gonna log on to Google and actually perform some searches that are gonna auto-complete, and today's topic is going to be about what people think about doctors, or what questions they have about doctors. You ready? I think to do this in the, the most fair way is to go incognito to make sure that my past search results don't affect anything. Try searching for dinner recipes, funny cat videos, jobs hiring near me, HD wallpaper, dog breeds, and how to make French toast. <laughs> Why those things for me? Doctors are... <laughs> the first result is doctors are miserable. <laughs> the second one is doctors are overrated, overpaid, are not rich, are quacks, are not scientists, are heroes. The seventh search is the one that's positive about doctors. That's why we're falling in the most respected professions category. For America's doctors, the scales are tipping from satisfaction to misery. Other findings show that 87% say the business of healthcare has changed the practice of medicine for the worst. I don't want this to be the first search result, but it's actually true. Burnout and moral injury is a serious, serious problem in the healthcare space. You get into the field of medicine because you want to help people. In fact, when you interview medical students, that's the number one answer they give. But then when you start practicing and you're seeing how you become a slave to the technology, to the lawyers, to the documentation, and not actually focus as much as you want on helping a person, that will make you miserable. Doctors are overrated. I wanna see this one. I work in the healthcare setting and I'm around doctors a lot. Where I work and I'm assuming other places are like this as well, as many patients as possible are crammed into their schedules. So while I'm sure they would like to spend more time with each patient, they simply can't and often feel rushed. What unfortunately can sometimes lead to not making the best decision for a patient or pushing over things that may need more attention. I've seen doctors sometimes rush patients out the door. They'll tell them, oh hey, just take this medicine, no worries, blah, 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 blah. Do they ask the patient if they can afford the medicine? Does your pharmacy even have this medicine in stock? What happens? The patient ends up going home, they try and go to the pharmacy, they find out it's too expensive or it's not in stock, they don't take it, their condition gets worse, and the doctor's like, legally they're covered because they gave the treatment, but in the end, that miscommunication really just ended badly because the patient didn't get the healthcare they required. Are doctors the most overrated people on the planet? Come on. Why doctors hate their computers. I just want to click that one first. Digitization. I can't say that word for some reason. Promises to make medical care easier and more efficient, but are screens coming in between doctors and patients? I'll tell you why I hate my computer. You didn't enter if the baby was a smoker. <laughs> click smoker, click never, which is weird that that's even an option. Oh, error, you never said if the patient ever used chewing tobacco. We didn't sign up to work with computers. We signed up to work with patients and to help them out. And if it meant clicking a few boxes, that's fine. But now our administrative tasks are so, like there's just so many of them that we can never really focus on our patient's care. That not only makes us feel less worthwhile as professionals, it also takes away the fun out of practicing. When my father was a doctor writing in a chart, he could spend the majority of the visit just being face to face with the patient. Now when I walk into a room, I specify to my patient, look, first I have to stare at the computer, ask you a bunch of check boxes, and then we can go in and have a normal human conversation. And then they understand, but that's not the way medicine was intended to be practiced. And I think we really need to find a solution for this administrative burden that we place on us doctors. My doctor has... <laughs> oh, we found gold! We found gold! Oh my God. My doctor has a cow puppet cast. <laughs> How is that the number one search? Oh my God, I'm literally tearing up on this one. I gotta click on the cow puppet cast. Oh, that's not even fair. I was laughing for no reason. It's because Two and a Half Men did an episode on My Doctor Has a Cow Puppet. Can I even see this cow puppet? <laughs> Do doctors near me. To you, that might not make sense, but to me, because I was involved in part of this campaign, it's actually not do doctors, it's DO doctors, doctor of osteopathic medicine, doctors near me, right? Yay, look, I'm right there. By the way, if you don't know what a DO is, I really urge you, click the link down below in my description box where I describe all the differences between a DO and MD, but more importantly, the similarities between the two and how the differences are actually shrinking as the days go by. Do doctors 
still use pagers. Absolutely, we still use pagers. Nearly 80% of hospitals still use pagers, according to a study from the Journal of Hospital Medicine. No, doctors aren't just stubborn about leaving the dinosaur age of communication. There are some important reasons we use one-way pagers. Pagers send high-frequency radio signals that get a range similar to an FM radio broadcast. Plus, unlike cell signals, which only go to the nearest cell tower, pagers send to multiple satellites. This redundancy increases reliability of the message getting through because if one tower is down, the others are usually working. So there's a reason why we like pagers. It's not because we're all dinosaurs. Because I don't like to think of myself as a 29 year old as a dinosaur. <laughs> Next month I might when I turn 30. Why do doctors have such bad handwriting? The most common reason for illegible handwriting is the large number of patients to be seen, notes to be written, and prescriptions given in a short time. It should also be accepted that poor handwriting has no correlation with medical acumen or expertise of a doctor. <laughs> Can you imagine the worse the handwriting, the better the doctor? The poor handwriting thing has always confused me. Like, I don't have great handwriting, but I don't think anyone's ever told me it's illegible. They just always said it's sloppy. And I think sloppy is okay for a doctor because you're in a rush. Illegible? It's like dangerous for the patient. Just saying. Why are doctors paid so much. Why are doctors so bad? All right, I like, why are doctors so late? So in my office, we have a late policy of 15 minutes, which can be quite troubling. Think about it. If you have a 15 minute appointment scheduled with your doctor, like a time slot for, let's say, upper respiratory infection, you get 15 minutes. If you come 14 minutes late to that, there's no way I'm going to see you in a minute. I'm still going to give you the 15 minutes you need, but then I have to make up that time somehow later in the day. And then sometimes the 15 minutes I have allotted to you may require much more time. You know, a patient comes in with a cough, but I find out that they're actually having a really horrible COPD exacerbation, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. They can't breathe and they need breathing treatments and that's gonna take my attention away and cause the schedule to start piling up and backing up. So I know you think that doctors run late because we're doing something weird behind the scenes or we're being lazy or tardy. It's not usually because of that. It's usually because we're trying to accommodate patients or there's an emergency or something else going on. My doctor will not prescribe Ambien. Ambien is a prescription medication and it's a controlled substance. And if your doctor believes that you shouldn't be taking Ambien for whatever reason, perhaps it's in your best interest. For example, if I've never done labs on you and all of a sudden you have trouble sleeping when you never had trouble sleeping before, the solution is not just to put a Band-Aid and give you a prescription medication. Oh, I like this one. Will doctors be automated. I don't think doctors will ever be replaced by algorithms. I mean, it's always possible. It depends how far in the future we're talking about. Algorithms can work hand in hand with doctors, but they cannot fully replace doctors. Being a doctor means caring for the person sitting in front of you. And that's why there's already so much talk and anger about working on electronic health records. If we bring robots into this situation, you really need to understand a human's emotion, their thought process, their education level, their comfort level with you. And no person will ever be comfortable with a robot. <laughs> Could doctors' pregnancy tests be wrong? Of course, any test can always be wrong. It could be lab error, but generally that's a pretty accurate test. What does a doctor look like? <laughs> I wanna click on that, cause that's messed up. Black doctors have responded to medical emergencies in public spaces only to have their credentials questioned. One physician answers questions on her experience and reflects on ways to improve public perception. Well, first of all, it's cause we need more diversity in medicine. Now we're talking about gender diversity. We already have a huge uptick in that. In fact, in some specialties, the number of female medical students outnumber male medical students. So good, we're getting more diversity. It's changing, but now we need more racial diversity. I think that will only strengthen the ability to practice on a larger scale, care for all different types of patients. How come doctors don't get sick? We do get sick. Doctors and nurses get sick just like you do from time to time. I think doctors do have a healthy immune system because we are exposed to a lot of germs, but sometimes, especially if you're treating pediatric patients, you can get sick a lot. Should doctors, ooh, tell the truth is interesting. Traditionally, the doctor did not tell the truth lest the patient be harmed. And some member or members of the patient's moral community must be given the truth. The only times I would say that doctors shouldn't tell the truth is if it's gonna be in direct harm of the patient. Very subjective uh, in nature. So sometimes I have a family come to me and they have an elderly patient. This is the classical scenario at least, where they have a patient that is very ill and they're older and they don't want their grandmother to know what the severity of her cancer is because they know that she has very bad anxiety if she finds out it could harm her even more now in these scenarios we can sort of give some not lies 
but sort of roundabout answers. Like, yeah, we're working to fix this. We're taking all the best steps. Those instances are really few and far between. In general, doctors should be honest. We should be forthcoming. We should be calming, informative. The more we can deliver news in this straightforward, clear approach, I think the better the outcomes are gonna be. In fact, patients would always compliment me or patients' families would compliment me on how straightforward I was when I was discussing a do not resuscitate order, which is an order you would say to not do chest compressions and try and revive someone once their heart stops. And when I tell them that it's not in the best interest of their family member, that we'd be doing more harm than good, and I didn't go on this roundabout way of saying it, they really appreciated it. So I actually like when doctors are very frank and honest, but still sensitive to the needs of the patient and the patient's family. How is a doctor who is a generalist different than a specialist? Well, this is interesting. So generally, if you wanna become a subspecialist, and I'm saying generally because there's other ways, you would go through an internal medicine residency where you're trained as an internist, which is a generalist who treats adults. Then you can go into a subspecialty where you are a fellow and you learn that specialty for several years or a year, depending on the type. And then now you're a specialist and you generally focus on that area of the body. So if you're a cardiologist, it means you did an internal medicine residency and a cardiology residency. And then also in family medicine, there's interesting ways to do that. Like you can be a family medicine doctor who specializes in everything. And then afterwards, you can subspecialize in like sports medicine or women's health or geriatrics. It takes more time, but you learn more of the in-depth study of that region and you can treat very specific patients who are having problems that the general doctor can't treat. I put together a playlist of crazy doctor stories right here. So click that bad boy and I'll see you there, making sure you're happy and healthy.